Daniel Di Servo. Uh, Professor Di Servo got his, uh, his bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD from Unicampi, his PhD in 2002. He did a postdoc at, uh, uh, at the TU Dortmund, the Technical University of Dortmund in Germany in 2005. And since 2007, he's a professor at the at uh, Unicampi. He came back to his his alma mater, and uh, he was uh, he worked out also at the uh, at the synchrotron from 2004, 2007, and 2006, 2011. And today he's going to talk to us about Lego at the, at atomic scale. This synthesis are new to the materials on surfaces. So Professor, uh, Professor uh, Abner, thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, George. Thank you very much, uh, all the, the organizers for the opportunity to be here today, speaking a little bit about our work. Uh, this uh, I plan for today to, to speak a little bit about uh, some work we we are doing during the last uh, few years. Uh, that is basically I, I name it like playing with uh, with Lego. Now we use uh, some small uh, pieces to to mount together and, uh, and try to to make more complex materials sometime trying to design materials with new properties, uh, always at the surface. Yeah? And uh, with that, I, I plan, this is the outline of my talk, I, I plan to give in the beginning some motivation, perhaps for the uh, students of the post-graduação. This might be interesting also, some fundamental properties of, uh, of these materials, why they are interesting, and how they can be produced. Uh, and second, uh, I will uh, give some details about the growth process we are applying here uh, and the, the characterization techniques we use to understand uh, the materials from a fundamental point of view. Uh, basically, we want to produce a model system and uh, as examples, I selected two topics. The first one is the uh, growing of uh, epitaxial graphene, but also uh, this uh, boronitrite, uh, hexagonal boronitrite, that we could combine it with correct precursor to, to produce a, a kind of a hybrid material of uh, we name it B and C. And the second part, if I have time, I would like to, to show some moths, this uh, molecular organic frameworks. Particularly, we use porphyrins as a kind of important molecule to, to construct those uh, complex structures. So why uh, 2D materials uh, are interesting in what they are? Huh? Basically, we have really large families of 2D materials. Huh? We, we can go from completely organic system to completely inorganic system, oxides made of a single uh, species or made of different species, example, graphene or HBN, TMDs are very exciting uh, materials nowadays. Uh, what they have in common perhaps is they, the, this uh, classes of materials, they are present in layers. Yeah, that means uh, the interaction between atoms in the layer is very strong, typically uh, uh, covalent bonding, and the interaction between the layers are uh, quite weak, typically uh, van der Waals interaction, because of that we can easily exfoliate the material, separate the material in layers, and in, in several cases the important properties are given by the the single layers, uh, or at least uh, single layers of these ma these materials start to present some exotic key properties. Um, for example, uh, um, these materials gave uh, two Nobel Prize in physics, uh, 
recently, I would say, in 2004 and 2014. The first one related to graphene, the second one related to topology of the matter. Uh, basically, they also use the topological insulators. They are also 2D materials in many cases. And more recently, uh, the people uh, managed to construct quite bizarre uh, materials or uh, 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 other uh, uh, materials made of the same kind of uh, atoms. For instance, if you do uh, uh, a small uh, quantum dot made of carbon with some special uh, geometry like this one, it was named Triangulen, uh, it has some special magnetic uh, properties that appears in the in the edge of the, the the structure. Also, very popular and is a hot topic nowadays is the twistronic, what they name to to say this area, where they put two uh, layers materials can be uh, by layers of graphene, by layers of TMDs, etc. And depending on of the angle between of the, uh, between these layers, uh, some uh, exotic properties may emerge. For instance, you can have uh, 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 ferromagnetism in carbon in, in graphene that, in principle, you, you would not expect for that. And even you could see uh, uh, superconductivity. And more, in, in our case, we are interested to, to construct what we name uh, toy models. We could think in, in designing some system that we can uh, create some artificial uh, structures, for, for instance, uh, uh, spinlets structures uh, in systems that are frustrated or not frustrated, depending on the geometry. This is one example of the literature uh, quite recently when, when, where they use this kind of organic molecules that are coordinated by uh, metal atoms, magnetic metal atoms. And uh, in this coordination, you, uh, we can see the emergence of uh, ferromagnetic ordering of this 2D uh, LATSI. In this another system here, uh, the people have used these uh, phytalocyanin uh, uh, molecules uh, uh, with different functionalization in the center, in this case with iron, in this case with manganese, and they order on the surface like a chessboard. And because of that, you, you can have these distinct types of uh, 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 spin structures uh, contributing and what we have seen that this uh, uh, can establish a long range ferromagnetic order and they could explain uh, for example using this uh, famous AKKY interaction and also they found the, uh, the condom lattice structure in the system and so on. So the materials are also very uh, promising for a lot of different types of application. You can run this in micro batteries, supercapacitors, uh, different kind of sensors, um, solar cells, organic solar cells, etc. And uh, I, I took for from from the literature, for in, for instance, some examples. This is one example where they use uh, um, this uh, reduced uh, uh, graphene oxide uh, that can be uh, doped in the process as a, any, a, a, any type uh, semiconductor. And they use also these uh, TMDs or flakes of these TMDs, this uh, um, molybdenum disulfide, very, very famous, very well studied. But when they combine it is locally, you can have a kind of extra junction, yeah, a PN junction that works as a, um, as a promoter for, for, for uh, uh, photocatalysis. Uh, in presence of light, uh, solar light, you can, you can have the splitting of water 
and it, this is a, a way to produce in an economically friendly uh, way the hydrogen. Huh? This is a way, one way to produce energy that is uh, uh, ecologically friendly. So this is another possibility that people can go to Minas Gerais and take it from the, from the mines, uh, 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 graphite, not graphene, like we know some people say. It's not possible to get graphene from the mines. You can get graphite. And, but the people from the University of uh, uh, Triangulo Mineiro, my colleague Rogério Guillermo, he, he can produce uh, with this graphite um, multi layers of graphene electrodes that are flexible. Then you can imagine to have your supercapacitor uh, going around the structure of your cars and so on. This is a kind of dream, but it's already uh, in practice. People are doing this around the world. In this, another example is really exciting to me because they wanted to use, for example, porous uh, 2D materials like uh, porous graphene to be used like uh, um, purification of water or desalinization of water from the sea. And this is a theoretical uh, work, but here we also have uh, after the uh, maybe uh, after some predictions, you, you we have also in practice the people have used uh, uh, um, graphene oxide to produce this uh, porous graphene and create these membranes for desalinization of water and it works quite quite uh, uh, nicely. So depending of the uh, material and depending on the application you are interested to, 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 to use, you can think about what method to, to produce these materials, to synthesize this material. You can use the so-called top-down method or the bottom-up. The top-down top is very famous, like for example, mechanical exfoliation, you use a, 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 a tape, a stick tape to, to exfoliate the material from, the, from a book material, you can, in a more, uh, I would say, large production, uh, exfoliate the material at liquid phase using ultrasonication or using uh, intercalation of ions in a liquid uh, environment. You, uh, or you can grow from the uh, bottom up, you can start to grow from small precursors the, the material itself. The famous example are uh, PVD, uh, physical vapor deposition or chemical vapor deposition, CVD, largely used nowadays. But today I am more interested to explain to you the on-surface chemical synthesis. And uh, this work like that, you, you come with these small pieces like the molecules working like Lego pieces, yeah, you come with these precursors, you choose correctly the, your precursor, you choose the, the designing of the molecule, the structure of the molecule, the type of atoms and the position of the atoms. This is somehow quite correlated with the, um, somehow correlated, I would say, with the Nobel Prize in chemistry that was present uh, yesterday, I think. And this is, um, works like that. You, you design the, the, the molecule, then you come with the molecule to the surface. You can have a self-assembling of molecules on the surface. You can promote the, uh, uh, you can select a, a, a hierarchical elimination of atoms, specific atoms. In these examples, we are eliminating these guys for instance, could be hydrogen. And then you get very reactive products that you, you can use the surface to promote the formation of a more complex structure. You can promote using light, for instance, like uh, uh, you, you submit this material to light, it's forming a, a new uh, a polymer, for instance, or you can use heat to, to, to get this more complex structure. And you can do this uh, plane in your molecule to construct like linear arrays or 
uh, more complex array. In this case, they have planted this kind of uh, uh, molecule with some linker and putting on the correct surface, you can get, for instance, in this uh, cartoon, a uh, square porous network. Yeah, but you can perhaps imagine to form some Kagomi lattice, some hexagonal, triangular uh, lattice, or whatever, depending where, uh, what you are planning to do. Yeah, in principle, this is, is, is possible to, to plan it to construct the system the way you want. To, to really investigate these structures, we need probably some local technique yeah, that we can uh, see this structure and not using uh, average techniques like um, uh, some spectroscopy technique or diffraction technique that see all the, the sample. Sometimes we are interested to see a small pieces of these uh, uh, building blocks. And to do that, we are typically using uh, techniques like STM. Let me, let me uh, show here this video. How works the STM? STM uh, was invented in the uh, beginning of uh, 80s, like century, and was a so powerful technique that the Nobel Prize was uh, given to the inventors, these two, two guys. Uh, from the IBM in Zurich, in Switzerland, uh, just after five years. Uh, and basically what you can do with this, you can do a lot, but uh, uh, to do uh, what we say imaging of the surface, we can, appro uh, we can approach a tip, very sharp tip, typically metallic tip to the, to the surface. And uh, we can establish what we say, um, uh, tunneling junction. Yeah, that means we, we are close enough to have the tunneling of electrons from the surface to the tip or from the tip to the surface depending on the direction of the bias that you apply. Yeah? And that means we establish a, a flux of current here, a tunneling current, and you can use this current to control the distance between tip and surface. Yeah, in fact, you control the, the current, for example, to make uh, this uh, tunneling current constant. And since this tunneling uh, uh, current is very dependent on the distance and on the density states of your sample, uh, it will react depending on the uh, scanning position on the surface. That means if you, our surface has a, a, a step, here, the, the, the tip typically be, uh, will uh, uh, approach to the surface. If you have a hill, the tip will uh, go far away from the surface. This is one mode of measurement of this kind of uh, microscope. And uh, uh, the, the basically uh, of this, uh, how to, 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 to work the STM is a, a quantum effect, yeah? the, the, the tunneling quantum effect that we, we know very well in these uh, uh, beginning courses of quantum mechanics. Uh, I do not pretend to, to, to bore you with this, but uh, the important thing, if you just solve a simple problem, like a one-dimensional problem, you can get a, a quite good uh, picture of what is happening in the STM you see that the probability of one particle in the case, the electron goes from this region that I would say the sample, from, uh, from the sample to a second region that is the tip, is, um, has this dependence, this exponential dependence that is quite depending on the distance, this uh, day blue here. Huh? Day blue is the, uh, the distance from, the, from one uh, region to the other. That means if you change, typically if you change one angstrom, one angstrom, the distance of the, the tip, the, the probability changes one order of magnitude. That means the, the tunneling current that is proportional will uh, change by one order of magnitude just when you change one angstrom. That means it is very, very sensitive to the distance of the tip to the surface. But not only that, 
we have, for example, one part that is this exponential that depends on the distance and depending also uh, on the, the, the difference, the bias between the surface and the tip né, that we, we apply. And of course, by consequence, on the, the, the work function of the tip and the surface, this difference. But this is one, I would say, geometrical term that uh, the, the tunneling current is dependent. We have a second and more important uh, dependence that uh, is related to this convolution, this integral uh, uh, in the energy domain of the dense of states that is allowed uh, to, to, to the electrons be tunneling from or uh, 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 tunneling to, 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 to unoccupied states. And it works like that. For example, uh, typically the tip is uh, at ground state. And it typically we put the, 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 the sample in a bias relative to the, to the tip. Yeah? And, and if you put the tip in the uh, negative bias, that means that electrons from the valence band of your sample can tunnel to the uh, unoccupied state, the conduction band from your T. If you, in other way, you polarize your sample positively, electrons from occupied states from the tip, that in this case we are uh, assuming flat, they are tunneling to unoccupied states of the uh, your uh, uh, conduction band of your your sample. If you have molecules on surface, you would not have really uh, 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 bands, but you would have uh, orbitals like uh, LUMO and OMO, and you can tune selectively to these orbitals. That means if you vary, if you change the, the bias from negative to positive, you are basically uh, measuring the density, you are covering the dense of states close to the firm level of your sample. Yeah, you, you can extract this information of the uh, LEDOS, local dense of states, uh, in a very uh, uh, precise and a very uh, small region of, this, of your surface, like uh, one atom or uh, over one atom or over one particular uh, bonding uh, of your uh, molecule. Of course, to understand this, uh, typically we need not only the images or the curves of the spectroscopy, we, we call this scanning tunneling spectroscopy, we need also uh, theoretical calculations. Typically, we, we, we ask theoreticians to, to simulate what, what is expected for the surface and we compare the dense of states with uh, calculated with the, 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 the measurement and also the images that are simulated with the images we collect uh, in the experiments. Yeah, regarding the STS, since we can vary the, the bias uh, in, the, in, the, in the sample, uh, we can collect the current as a function of the bias voltage and we can differentiate. That means that, uh, before we have this, we have an integral. Huh? If when we are doing uh, STS, the tip stops, uh, is not moving. That means this exponential dependence does not change, is uh, uh, a constant. Uh, and that integral turns like uh, a, a dependence on the, the dense of state. That means when we, we do this differentiation, we got this differential conduction and we got basically um, a fingerprint of the dense of state of the sample, like this. This is one example, we have graphene and here we have the uh, differential conduction that is very uh, representative of the dense of states of the graphene with this typical V-shape. Uh, if you go to HBN, 
hexagonal boronitride. This is a kind of insulator, uh, and we expect to see this large band gap. And since it's very local, né, you see, is you can do this in the position you like. You can have, for example, in this case, in this uh, uh, work in the literature, they produce an actual junction. Here is graphene, here is HBN, and depending where you are measuring, you see different uh, answers, uh, different local dense of states, and would be very interesting to see effects of the, 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 the edge of these materials né? that could be interesting here, for example, the formation of a, a kind of actual junction, lateral actual junction. So this is the instrument we are using. This is the microscope itself. It's quite small, like uh, uh, this block is the size of my hand. Yeah? Uh, is a, a block that is suspended by a, a spring. Yeah? This, basically, we have a a harmonic oscillator here, and the idea is to decope from the mechanical uh, vibrations that comes from the ground and so on. Yeah? This is the, the idea, because we want to be sensitive to sub angstrom yeah? That means any vibration that comes from the ground, for example, uh, if a bus passed through the, 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 the street here, uh, I can feel the bus passing through. Yeah? I know exactly when the bus uh, is, is, is going through the, uh, in front of my lab. Uh, this is the tip yeah, that is mounted on top of this uh, piezoelectric motor. Yeah? Uh, we can approach the tip. Here is completely up. We can see uh, here the small tip is uh, terminating in, in in atoms, we cannot see, of course, but uh, in fact, it's terminating single atom. And the, the sample goes here, in this region, uh, with the surface going down. That means the tip is traveling from bottom to the surface. And when we reach the tunneling junction, then we can start to do the measurements, images, and also uh, STS spectroscopy. This is mounted in a chamber like that. This is a little bit complex system, UHV, ultra high vacuum, because you want to have the surface uh, clean during all the time you are doing measuring. Sometimes we do the measuring the holidays, sometimes we do during weeks. And that means the, the vacuum inside of this chamber should be excellent, should be like a one, 10 minus 11 or close like that. That means we have a vacuum that is not interstellar, but is uh, from the space. Yeah, this is a really good vacuum. And uh, together with that, we have so associate chamber that we can perform other techniques, other uh, uh, associate techniques, and we can prepare our sample. We can clean the cluster, we can reconstruct the surface, we can deposit, and we can grow the material, for instance. Uh, that is the, the subject of this talk, yeah? the on-surface synthesis. We, we prepare our samples inside of the chamber. Uh, a second technique that is this one, this is the instrument, this is a big uh, semi sphere here. This is the um, uh, electron analyzer. We can do X-ray photoemission spectroscopy, the very well-known XPS. This is based on the photoelectric effect. That means we come with a photon that you know very well the energy of this monochromatic uh, photon uh, source. You know the energy. Uh, the atom can absorb the photon and one electron is ejected. And what we measure with this uh, filter is the uh, kinetic energy of the electron that is represented by this equation, a uh, very famous uh, Einstein equation of uh, energy conservation. Uh, you will know the, the energy of the photon, we measure the kinetic energy, then we know the binding energy. That means we know from what level uh, the electron comes from, therefore we can know 
uh, we can map the the um, internal core levels of the atoms present on the surface. That means we have an element-specific technique. We know what elements are present, and we know also uh, the stoichiometry. Yeah, uh, measuring these areas of these peaks, we know how much we have of that element, and also. If the element is bounded to, I don't know, if it's a metal bounded to another metal, it's appearing in one uh, uh, binding position. But if it's bounded to a oxygen, for instance, to, to make an oxide, then it's, it's shift. This chemical shift is very important because of that we can really say the chemical environment of the, the, of the atom. Uh, we can determine what kind of species we have there. If you have, for example, CO, or if you have a carbon-carbon bond or carbon-nitrogen bond, everything is possible to, to, to extract. It's very uh, powerful and uh, complementary technique. Okay, now I would like to quickly move to the first example. We have recently skewed the formation of this kind of... Uh, 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 hybrid material, the graphene with uh, HBN. This is part of the thesis of my student, Natalie Herrera. We have also the collaboration of other students of my, my group and also uh, the contribution for the DFT calculation from Professor Luis Henrique de Lima from the UFABC. Uh, what is the idea? We know the graphene is a zero gap semiconductor. That means to, to, to use this for several applications, to use graphene for sensors and uh, other applications, is interesting to open the gap. One idea to open the gap is doping the material. You can dope with nitrogen, you get an any type uh, semiconductor. You dope with uh, 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 boron, for, for example, you, you get a p-type uh, 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 material, uh, a semiconductor. And the people have used different strategies. For, for example, in this case, they use this kind of molecule to, to grow uh, graphene doped with boron. And they could see uh, some uh, amount of doping uh, for the graphene. Yeah? Uh, other works, they try to use two precursors. They, they have used uh, uh, methane, to, to grow graphene, and they put together this another molecule that I don't know exactly the name uh, to to try to, to to dope the material with boron during the growth. And what they have seen, this is ARPS measurement, they could see uh, the doping of the material yeah, correctly. Uh, but uh, uh, some time ago already, uh, maybe a little bit old, uh, work um, uh, was appearing in the literature with this theoretical pre uh, uh, prevision. Uh, they, they, they suggest to, to open the band gap of graphene using uh, not boron, not nitrogen, but uh, units of BN. Yeah? You can uh, imagine to dope the graphene with BN units. You can use one BN unit, or you can use, them, for example, three BN units. In this case, would be this ring of uh, uh, BNs. Or you can even use some uh, clusters, small clusters of BN units, like 12 BN units. And what they have seen that if you use, for instance, this one, you could go uh, after 30% of these BN units, doping the material, you could open the band gap almost like 1.5 electron volts. And our proposal is to use a material that has already this unit, yeah, a precursor, a molecule that has already this kind of structure, but also to gather carbon to, to, to grow the graphene uh, at once. Yeah? We have these methyl groups here, and the idea was splitting the hydrogen and connect everything. So how that works? 
uh, in the same way that you are using to grow graphene, for example, you comes with the with the molecule like uh, uh, methane uh, in a hot surface like this, and when the the material reach this metallic surface that is hot, hydrogen is split out, goes away, and the carbon atoms they diffuse, they bond together, and they form the graphene. This is the way that you can grow, for instance, uh, epitaxial uh, graphene, single layer. Yeah, this is uh, one work we we did some time ago that we could grow a single layer of graphene, completely oriented, very low number of defects, uh, and a single, single layer. Why this is so important? Because this is a catalytic limited, yeah, this is a surface limited reaction. That means when you grow one layer, the metal is not exposed anymore. That means the reaction cannot take place anymore, and this self uh, uh, direction is self uh, uh, limited. It's finished. Yeah? Doesn't matter if you put more gas; nothing happens after one monolayer. Is this the same way to grow uh, HBN, hexagonal boron nitride, on surface? The same strategy. This is a very famous work in the literature. And we said, okay, let's try to use our molecule. This is the instrumentation we needed to connect it to, to put the precursor that is here. This is a small powder that we can, we needed to keep uh, cool it. But when we evaporate, we heat up and then we can sublimate inside of the chamber with the sample very close and we sublimate it on the surface and everything starts from that. Here, we start with uh, rhodium because we have a lot of uh, works using rhodium to, to grow HBN. I said, okay, let's try with rhodium. We put rhodium uh, single crystal. We deposit the monolayer here of the molecules. Uh, this is the STN image. Surface is completely covered, but random. The molecule is stick to the surface in a random way. We use XPS to measure carbon uh, level, and we see the, the uh, from room temperature we have this position of the carbon. That means the the bonding between carbon and hydrogen are preserved. But when we reach temperatures like 800 Kelvin, uh, carbon shift. That means probably in this temperature, uh, hydrogen bondings are uh, break it, uh, and the hydrogen goes away. And the carbons start to, 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 to bond together. If you go, in fact, this is the image, it's still a little bit uh, uh, chaotic here, a little bit like uh, 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 um, not ordered structures. But if you go a little bit further, 900 Kelvin, we start to see the formation of graphene. These are small graphene flakes. Yeah, we could see that this graphene from the STN image measuring the distance between atoms, uh, but also doing STS that shows this typical V shape. Then we, we know very well this is graphene. And we said, okay, let's try to produce now the HBN. When we heat up to 1000 Kelvin, what we got was this. Basically HBN only, and the, the carbon goes away. In fact, they uh, migrate to the bulk of the, of the rhodium uh, crystal, the substrate. Then we said, okay, we have a problem in rhodium. Let's try uh, uh, another material. We search a little bit in the literature. We said, okay, probably another material. But before that, we, we, we try to prepare at high temperatures to, to try to get the, the, the material at once doesn't work again, but was very nice that we could produce a perfect, perfect HBN uh, layer. Yeah, this we can see this uh, uh, structure, very regular. Here we can even see the atoms. This is our uh, atoms of boron and nitrogen. We could even, from the XPS, extract the correct stoichiometry that was one by one. We know we have exactly one nitrogen per boron atom, 
and we could separate in the nitrogen uh, the nitrogen that's are in this region that's a little bit further from the surface they interact less with the surface and they show uh, a binding energy a little bit smaller than these ones that are in this region that are close to the substrate they are interacting with the metal because of that they look like uh, more bonded with a binding energy a little bit uh, larger yeah and measuring STS we could see this nice band gap about a 5 EV that is the expected band gap for uh, HBN I said okay let's try another material Irid iridium is a, a material that is uh, uh, carbon cannot uh, uh, be uh, 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 soluble in the in the in the in the metal, and we try to to grow and uh, uh, choosing the temperature. We could, for example, uh, 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 have a sample like this one. So I would say interesting sample that we have a region that is basically dominated by HBN, but we can see small. Uh, flakes of, of graphene here, even a, tri a triangle here, or almost a triangle here, that we, we went with the, 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 the uh, STM, we could really demonstrate they are graphene, but they are uh, in the surround a lot of uh, HBN, basically HBN. In another region, interestingly, we have basically graphene. This is basically graphene with some small uh, structures here, like this donut that is uh, zoomed here. We have these small donuts here, yeah, but uh, uh, in not so uh, high density. That means when we come this region, we perform STS, we can see this V shape. That means this region behaves like graphene. And uh, if you go to one region like that, behaves like HBN. And this, in this case, we could see regions that we have a kind of junction, one side graphene, another side, a, a side, side uh, HBN. But the most, most interesting, when we try to, ah, okay, in this region, we have what we would say a large density of those uh, donuts in this region. Yeah? And in fact, then we discovered that we, when we try to adjust the amount of these donuts and we, we try to, to simulate, we could see these donuts are in fact uh, HBN clusters. Yeah, they are quite regular. They, they, they occupy basically some, some specific sites of the, the graphene, let's see. And they are most of the case perform, uh, formed by eight units. Yeah, this would be BN8. And when we did several uh, measurements of STS in, in a sample like this, we got STS curves like this, yeah, with a, a band gap of around 1.5 electron volts. That was kind of uh, kind of nice to produce this carbon boron nitride uh, structure. And the, the, the reason why we have this bright structure in the, in the edge and not in the center is because here we have accumulation of electrons. This kind of bond is not favored. And because of that, we have, for example, in this, this bond carbon with uh, 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 boron or carbon with nitrogen, we have a, 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 a localization of dense of states here that appears in the in the STM like a, a bright uh, structure, huh? and in the same way we could uh, have this in the simulation. And uh, this result was uh, kind of nice because we got the the front cover also of the chemistry of materials in, in that edition. Huh? And we could uh, play. Now we are interested to try to see how is the, the, in more detail, the electronic and the optical properties of these materials huh? because of these localizations. Uh, if I have time, uh, I would like to introduce another 
uh, uh, subject that for me is very interesting is these MOFs, meta organic frameworks. This is very interesting because the idea that you can play with the molecules and perhaps metal to, to design from, from the beginning the, the structure with the exact uh, geometrical uh, structure or atomic positions of the, the species and the properties from, from the beginning. Uh, and this is one case. For example, the people use this, uh, this uh, uh, polyphenyl uh, structures that we can choose one with three. This is a three uh, phenyl structure. This is, uh, you have four, this is pentophenyl. And the, in the end, you have a molecule like CN, that is the growing, uh, the, 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 the glue, I would say. And uh, you can have atoms uh, that you put or you, 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 you get from the surface and after the reaction at the hot uh, surface, you can produce structures like this, hexagonal structures, but with selective size of the pores. Yeah? And then you can imagine you have an atom here and another atom here uh, or a here and here with a distance between them. But this is a little bit farther away and this is even further away. Yeah? You can design the, the size of the pore and the distance between, between the atoms could, to control, for example, interaction, long-range interaction between the atoms. This is another case we are now already uh, getting results in the lab. This is the example from the literature where they produce this kind of molecules, yeah? the, the chemical synthesis, they do that. Here in the our our precursors were produced in the in the chemistry department here in, in Unicamp by a colleague, Professor Professor Pili. And you can put the the, the 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 dopant in a specific position. And with this kind of geometry, when you do the reaction at the surface, you produce ribbons, yeah, you produce in ribbons like these ones that have the uh, dopant in a specific position. Yeah, this is the experimental image. You have the dopant in a specific position and you have this kind of uh, uh, poros. And this open for you uh, kind of band gap, very, very uh, exotic, very interesting, sometimes with flat bands in the, in the mid of the gap. So, uh, but now I would like to show you MOFs that we are doing more here for more time uh, using these porphyrins. Porphyrins are these molecules. Uh, they are very flexible. You can uh, functionalize with different kind of metals or organic groups, uh, almost everything that you can imagine. Uh, and in many positions. Yeah? That means you can uh, select the properties of your functional materials playing with the position where you functionalize or the atom you put in the center. And this is not invented by us. This is was invented by nature. Yeah? This is, uh, for example, this molecule is present on the uh, hemoglobin, in the M group of the hemoglobin. And there we have an iron atom exactly here, that is responsible to bound uh, gas, oxygen, for instance, to deliver to the cell. And uh, in the case of the, the plants, uh, uh, we have a similar molecule that is chlorophyll that has the same structure, but in the middle, we have a manganese atom. And this manganese atom open uh, states in the in the middle of the gap that is promoted, for example, in the, like in the case of this case, yeah? you have a band gap, you have opening uh, states in the middle of the gap that promotes a very efficient absorption of uh, solar uh, light uh, for our sun. Yeah? And in this case, uh, it's responsible for the energy conversion in, in the plants. Yeah? 
and we wanted to mimic nature. We wanted to do sensors for, for light. We would like to, to harvest energy from, from sun, uh, producing, for example, organic solar cells using this kind of molecules. That means you can choose different kinds of Lego pieces from this kind of molecules, and you can try to play and form functional organic frameworks using these uh, pore frames. Huh? Um, we are more interested now to use a different kind of pore frames uh, like this that are not functionalized in the center. This is what they call uh, free base pore frames. And, but functionalizing the, in the end with this uh, uh, phenyl uh, group with an atom from, from allergen atom. Could be chlorine, could be bromine. And uh, why those, those atoms? Because we have a very old reaction, the human reaction, that means you can put a halogenate molecule on the surface and depending on the temperature of the surface, you can uh, promote the dehalogenation. And then this species of this product is uh, movable enough and reactive to, to meet another uh, product uh, and form a more complex structure. And we want to do the same using these pore frames as a, as a precursor molecule. Yeah? And we, we, are, we have been testing in different surfaces where we have the uh, uh, interaction of the molecule more strong with the substrate, is the case of copper, or less, a little bit less interaction, that's the case of silver, or even no interaction uh, with the substrate, that is the case of graphene. Yeah? Here is the first case. We use uh, uh, the chlorinated porphyrin uh, on the surface of copper 111. Uh, this is the experimental image. This is a single molecule on surface. We evaporate very few molecules and we could find these molecules there. Uh, and that's um, 233 Kelvin we could mobilize the molecule on the surface and could measure, we could uh, image the, the molecule. And this molecule looks like this. Uh, and it's interesting because typically the molecule is square, but here in the surface is more or less like a rectangular. Yeah, and we said, oh, why this? In fact, the molecule uh, assume um, a, a, a conformation or a structure that was previously uh, uh, demonstrated. Uh, I was also in, involved by a, a colleague of us in Germany, in Erlang, where they, they could propose a new model for this structure that is named the inverted structure because this molecule that has a nitrogen group here, let's go back, these nitrogens here, these two nitrogens, imini, they are not completely passivated like this one with nitrogen, and they are quite reactive. And in this case, in copper, they are so reactive that they go in direction to the surface that makes this uh, pyro group here to go up and basically standing upward yeah? like this. Yeah? We have this in this case, that was another molecule. And also for this molecule, we have the same, same kind of, uh, uh, of behavior of the molecule on the surface. This is the theoretical simulation. This is the theoretical uh, image simulated that compares very nicely with, with the STM measurements. Then we said, oh, okay, now we wanted to see what happens if you hit a little bit the surface. If you hit a little bit the surface, uh, the molecule start to stick one to the another. And we start to see this kind of structure. This is the experimental image in 3D view. This is 2D view. We have seen the molecules and the uh, uh, protrusion in between here yeah, and here. And uh, what we have proposed, this protrusion in between, is in fact 
a copper ad atom. That means the molecule split out the chlorine and another molecule split the chlorine using this kind of human reaction and they are bounded together by a, a ad atom from the surface. Yeah, the surface at this temperature has a lot of ad atoms moving around and the molecule can pick up and uh, uh, connect one to the another with the atom in, in between, a single copper ad atom in between that is possible to observe here. And if you measure the distance, we can see here in the simulation, this is the situation with a copper ad atom. This is the simulation where we have a carbon-carbon bond, a, a covalent bonding that is much shorter. And we, we did a statistic for this. This is the, not a single measurement. We have a lot of statistics to confirm that this is really the case that this was also confirmed by, by Ferry. So we could even uh, uh, follow the, the bromination, uh, sorry, the, the chlorination, in this case, of the molecule. This is the XPS. We, we look for chlorine. Uh, levels. This is chlorine 2p. And uh, uh, looking to the chlorine 2p levels, we could see at room temperature that we have these contributions in orange and these contributions in blue. These contributions in blue is in a bounded, uh, in a binding energy that is related to carbon to uh, bromine uh, bonds. This is, uh, this is very well known from the literature. But this position, this, this uh, structure is related to uh, copper uh, chlorine. That means we, we, have per, we have formed copper chlorine bonds. And if you heat up, we can see that basically we promote the dechlorination of all the molecules up to the end when we have only chlorine at the surface. In this case, we could not observe the chlorine, but because they form, for example, a, a, a copper chlorine uh, layer yeah, in the surface, but we could not distinguish in the STM. Uh, in the interesting thing, if you heat up too much, we start also to put a, a copper ad atom inside of the cage of the, the porphyry. We can see here, if you, if you measure uh, the, the nitrogens, typically we have these two components, the iminic and the, 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 the aminic, yeah, one uh, alone and the, the other nitrogen with uh, hydrogen. But when we start to heat up too much, uh, the, the, the hydrogen goes away and pick up a, a, a copper in the middle, then we start to see uh, this, this uh, component here. This is, uh, 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 we follow this, this uh, reaction. So we ask also for the theoreticians to try to simulate the chemical path. And uh, they, they did uh, very successfully. They could, for example, measure, uh, they could calculate one situation that would be direct dechlorination that means we start with the molecule with the chlorine, then you lose the chlorine, and then you connect the molecules through a carbon-carbon bond. This uh, is performed by this kind of uh, green uh, uh, path. Yeah, you have some uh, barriers here, but if you look for the other situation, that is the human reaction. That means. The, the reaction that is assisted by a, a, a copper ad atom, then it's much easier. Yeah? Then you can go uh, easily to this. And then when you form this uh, uh, um, uh, carbon, copper, carbon, what we, we name uh, or, uh, organometallic uh, 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 bond, and then we, we go to this minimum of the energy here. And if you try to go to the covalent bond, you needed to split out this copper uh, atom from here and this cost a lot of the energy. Then we could go to this situation. But in fact, we could see that if you try to heat up too much, 
we started to methylate the molecule and we end up we, we uh, end up with this kind of of uh, structure with the molecule that is not the same anymore it was transformed now is the methylate porphyrin yeah and this was kind of uh, of nice to see that to 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 learn and then we said okay then try to put the same molecule on silver silver is less has less reaction we start to see when we deposit a, a few molecules instead to see uh, isolate molecules we never could see isolate molecules they travel a lot on the surface they go to the step edge and they start to grow uh, regular structures from the edge we can see here in the image if you put a lot of molecule then we cover the completely surface with an order array of molecules here we can see in a large image everything is covered and if you make a zoom here when really we look more much closer we can see they are completely ordered on the surface yeah and the que in fact we have more details here we have two types of uh, ordering two types of unit cell in this in this case uh, but then we said what happens if we heat a little bit more and then we transform this kind of structure to another structure again we 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 start to lose the chlorine but much uh, uh, lower now we need much higher temperature uh, it's take much longer to to dehydrogenate and we start to form another structure order structure that could be um uh, covalent bonding, but we believe it is more a, a, a order organo uh, organometallic uh, structure. Then we play uh, again. I, I'm already finishing. I play. Uh, we play again, uh, trying to change the glue, uh, trying to put different atoms on the surface, and of course the end of the functionalization of the molecule. Then we change the bromine or chlorine for uh, cyano group this is a cn uh, group here and we try to to see what happens if you put 3d metals iron cobalt or if you put a 4d metals that is more uh, reactive more catalytically like palladium and it was interesting when we we use this molecule we have the same inverted structure but when we use this molecule with the 3d metals we always have formed uh, lines, uh, wires or, 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 or chains of molecules, unidimensional chains of molecules. But when we put palladium, we got this kind of uh, 2D porous network. And it was very interesting that we could predict this kind of reaction that makes uh, the palladium promotes dehydrogenation in these parts of the molecule. Uh, hydrogen goes away. And then you have a cyclization of the molecule. And in fact, we could produce two types of, uh, 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 of the structures. We could produce this kind of molecule, like this one, or this kind of molecule. This is the experimental measurement. That when they combine, they can produce this order structure. And this work was also very nice that could, uh, was, uh, was selected to be uh, uh, cover from the, the chemistry of materials again, yeah, that we could uh, explain two different uh, uh, routes to, to produce uh, uh, wires or nano mesh of those uh, molecules. And to finish, we, we now uh, change the, the halogen to bromine. Now we, we, we put uh, bromine here. And we, on copper, we could see the formation of this um, more triangular uh, or, uh, structure yeah? uh, that is also bounded for atoms here. We, we could see this organometallic formation of the structure here. Yeah? We, we split away the, the bromine. In this case, it was very nice because we could see the bromine going away, but they don't go away. Uh, to the substrate or they don't uh, uh, populate the surface randomly. They like to come in the side of the molecule. They, they prefer this position. We could identify that. 
and uh, we could see that we, we can form this organometallic structure uh, regularly in the, in the copper 111. Yeah, this is also was a, a cover recently. And now we have already, this is unpublished result, that basically we are finishing the, 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 the article to, to submit. Uh, if you put the same molecule on silver, 100, and then we can produce um, a rectangular mesh. That is quite interesting because in this case, we could produce rectangular meshes, also populated by uh, gluid, I would say, by, by uh, silver at atom. Yeah, that we can see the, the, the atoms here. Or depending in some cases, we could form uh, a, a, a chain. Yeah? But the interesting thing in this case, we have a kind of structure of the molecule the so-called saddle shape, and this is the inverted. This is where we are still trying to understand in with the theoreticians. And our dream, uh, this is idea my student is going to PSI in Switzerland, the synchrotron in the Switzerland, and the idea is to, to construct the same structures, but populating or changing the silver by uh, magnetic atoms like uh, manganese or iron or cobalt and try to, to, to construct some, uh, some uh, um, uh, artificial spinlets structure and then we could try to use STM, they have a low temperature STM there to, to, to observe for example the condom transition uh, because we can measure STS with temperature dependence, yeah, very low temperature, of course, typically four, five Kelvin. Uh, but also you can apply uh, one technique that you can do in the synchrotron. Here in the synchrotron in Brazil is also possible to do, that is X-ray magnetic circular dichroism. That is a element specific in um, magnetic uh, uh, spectroscopy that can you can really say where is the magnetism of your material. And this would be nice to know if these uh, atoms forms a uh, anti-ferromagnetic ordering, ferromagnetic ordering, ferri magnetic ordering, whatever you can extract from XMCD. And perhaps, perhaps we can determine the mechanism of interaction if it's AKKY uh, or if it's uh, whatever is the mechanism we could try to, to, to see. Because we can have different uh, of the structure. That means we could observe systems that are uh, frustrated or not frustrated magnetically. With that, I would like to, to summarize. Basically, we use this surface synthesis to construct toy models that we want to explore, or I would say engineering functional to the materials. We use SPM, STS, and XPS to explore the, the, the material we are constructing. I hope the, I convince you that these techniques are very powerful to, to, to study these kind of materials. And I would finally uh, thank the people that really did the work, the, the PhD students and uh, uh, master's students that was involved in these uh, works I present here. We have also the collaboration from, especially in this work to, I present today from Luis Henrique de Lima from West ADC. We have collaboration with people in Erlang, also in other parts of the world. They do, for example, DFT calculation for us. Of course, the funding agents and your attention. Thank you very much. I would be very pleased to, to answer any question that you have. Abner, thank you. Thank you so much for this very, very nice talk. Uh, we, ha we have time for questions. Uh, time is not really a problem. So after this uh, a very nice uh, talk, I am sure there are questions. Uh, anyone? Uh, Mariana? Go, go ahead, please. I see. Uh, okay. can, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Abner. Thank you for a great talk. Very, very interesting. And uh, I would thank like you. to ask a question uh, in which I'm particularly interested, which is whether it's possible to design symmetries on demand or with this kind of techniques, uh, especially with the nano mesh. So yes. say I, I, I want a material that have a reflection, a line, a inversion point, and say a glide line. Uh, yes. Is it possible to, given a set of uh, predetermined symmetries, to engineer uh, nano mesh? Yeah, it's possible. In fact, it's possible. We, we are beginning, I would say, on that. But I know groups, for example, in Molecular Foundry in, in Berkeley, they do that. They really design the molecule to get in the end the, the material with the shape, whatever they, they like. They can really uh, think uh, together with the, 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 the chemical synthesis. The chemical uh, synthesis scientists can design the material uh, to, 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 to get the, the final uh, structure of the material with this property, like you said. For example, they can plan it to have, I, I don't have in this particular talk, but I know, for example, they can design uh, nano ribbons, uh, graphene nano ribbons, with the arm share. Yeah, you say, okay, this will be arm share nano ribbon, and this one will be not arm share, will be zigzag, and this will be uh, mixed, will be arm share. Um, one amount of armature and another amount of uh, zigzag. And they could form like chevron, huh? you know, uh -huh. this, uh, like this, huh? yeah. you have it, sorry, uh, like this chevron the structure. Uh, in fact, they can design, they can design the pores, they can design uh, everything. It's amazing. Another group that I plan to have my second student uh, going to do a, a BEP. This is the Bolsa, the Estágio de Pesquisa no Exterior from FAPESP. He's doing the PhD right now. We want to, to send him to, to EMPA uh, um, in, in Switzerland. Uh, we in the group of, uh, 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 what's his name now? Uh, Roman, Roman Facel. In the, in the group of Roman Facel, they, they also can design with the chemistry the whatever the structure you 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 imagine okay i will do a parenthesis here that means never it is not always you can get what you want huh? you you plan it the the uh, the structure you plan the molecule then you plan the synthesis on surface sometimes you don't get what you you expect yeah. you get something yeah. else but uh, but you can really plan it yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think nowadays the the learning on how manage the synthesis on surface, what correct substrate you can use it to get uh, a type of geometry, is really working better and better. For example, for mm -hmm. these four things, the people have already uh, used some of these uh, uh, multi-phenyl uh, structures. To, to be like a linker, and then you have a, a like a bigger plot. Yeah? You, you can construct really square structure, uh, much bigger. Yeah, uh, well, related to this um, question, uh, to this issue of the pores, can you guys in your group control the position of the pores on a, on a mesh like this? Say you want the pores in specific positions or in a, so that in the end you get uh, some kind of motif, yeah, like, like a tiling or, or something. Yeah, for example, so in this can case, you control the positions of the pores. Yeah, in this case, for instance, it's true. Let let me go back to to this guy. Yeah, in this case, uh, the molecule uh, works like that. Uh, the 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 bounding happens between. Uh, the bromides. Now the bromides goes away. Then yeah. you have, uh, for example, a silver or a copper or a gold uh, yeah. metal atom here. 
and it's much easier to, to, to make this uh, bounding here than other. And then you are sure you get the pore here. That means your uh, structure, this is the experimental measurement, for instance, yeah, they use this kind of a a AFM with the tip functionalized. They, they can see almost the boundaries. Huh? Uh, here you are sure about where are the atoms. You know that the nitrogen are here and the other nitrogen are here and the pore always happen here. And you can be sure that this edge is always uh, arm shell. Mm -hmm. This we can control. We are doing also here in our lab and uh, always we get this. Yeah, uh, the position of the interaction, if you produce um, uh, wires, for instance, that are uh, aligned all together or not aligned, depend more on the substrate. That means you choose the correct substrate to get everything aligned. What we are presently doing is trying to grow these material, these uh, nano ribbons. Uh, these porous nano ribbons uh, on vicinal surface. Uh, you have a stepped surface, regular stepped surface. That means we can know exactly the size of the step that you can try to put only one wire there. And uh, since they like uh, to, 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 to orient to some specific crystallographic direction, if you have the the step edge in that direction, you have in principle all the wires aligned to that to that direction, and this is a way to get a single motif on the surface, to get uh, a single proper. In the end, we would like to to extract the band structure of the material in the synchrotron using ARPS measurement, but okay. we can see, for example. Uh, things like this in our lab, the, the STS curves that mm -hmm. we see very nicely that we have some uh, features in the, in, the, in the local dense of states. Okay, thank you very much, Abne. Very, thank you. very interesting talk. Thank you for, your, for answering my question. Thank you. Thank any, you. sorry, um, any, more, any more questions, uh, anyone? Uh, Edson? I, I think Wei Chen has a question. Uh, Wei, uh, Wei Chen? Yeah, please. Uh, I miss this one. Yeah. Uh, Wei Chen, please uh, go ahead. I can, I'm not sure he's connected. He can type. He cannot hear him. Yeah, now I'm he uh, hearing you. But not away. Oh, oh okay. now it's connect. No, yes. I think now he just needs to ask raise his microphone. You need to unmute. Ah, okay, okay. okay. All right, yes. Sorry about this technical problem. So very nice talk. Thanks, uh, Abner. Thank you. So I, I mean to ask you in your slides about your MOF, uh, the very last part of your slides. Um, I did the one before, uh, let me think. I think it is your fifth last slide that you put it on the uh, silver, right? I, I guess it was the silver. Hey, silver, silver, silver. So yeah. I mean to mention that you, ah, this one, this one, right. So I mean to mention that, um, no, uh, can you, this one, right? Uh, the lower panel, um, the figure B. This might be something that this figure B in the lower panel, um, you notice that this pattern is actually non-symorphic. So that means that these, um, this little pattern that you have produced, it actually, uh, you need to reflect it and then shift it uh, to in order to go back to itself. Yeah, in, in, in principle, uh, how we have explained this, I don't know if I understand it, uh, correctly your question. We have two types of uh, 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 sitting position for the molecule. 
Uh -huh. uh, we, we have a, a sitting position that the 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 center of the cage goes, uh, if I remember, in a, in a top side. Yeah. And another one that is goes to a FCC, if I'm not wrong, site, or is FCC and ACP site. That means the energy for, for sitting in this position is not so different. And we believe that the, the, the system, depending when it starts from the edge, we, we started to promote one or another uh, uh -huh. Uh, uh, position for the phonemolecule, molecule instead to have a regular uh, pattern with a single uh, position uh, and here we have a, um, a different sites so, yeah? so so this is very nice because i mean to say that this is uh probably what mariana also have in mind uh, that that we we have been working on lately yeah, so I... my question is uh, can you do the same thing on graphene for any 2D materials to create this kind of non-symorphic pattern in a purely 2D. Yeah, uh, let me see if I have, We, in fact, we have, I don't know if I have here. I decide to not present because it's too much. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. So uh, let me just comment on that, if I may. Uh, yes, uh, way I also noticed this pattern and yeah, it's clearly non-symorphic, but I wonder whether you could attribute a crystalline, say, um, symmetry associated to this uh, bean-shaped structures. Yeah, the, the right? bean, the, the, let's, let's return first in this uh, slide and then comment on that uh, here. Uh, uh, the bean, uh, the bean shape, this kind of bean uh, shape, or I would say banana shape yeah, yeah. of these ones, uh, of the molecule, uh, this is the typical, um, what they say, saddle shape of the molecule. If you look for this molecule in the literature, always in the past, they, they name uh, to be saddle shape, like this. Huh? Right. This is the saddle shape structure. Uh, this is the uh, dense functional theory. In principle, if you see, you have this or this uh, being shaped here. Uh, in yeah. this case, the experimental looks like this, not so good. Yeah, this is the typical saddle shape structure when the nitrogen atoms are not interacting too strongly with the surface. Then we expect this in no interacting surface like uh, graphene and uh, or uh, uh, low interaction surface like uh, silver or uh, gold for instance yeah. in, in the case of uh, in the case of uh, uh, graphene i don't have here but we did we did the experiment we have the results we we try to 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 publish with uh, some message now we, we, we decide to change. It was not accepted that message. We, we need more experimental to really support what we, we like to, to say. But in, in, in fact, we could see ordinary patterns like this one, sorry, like very similar to these ones, to these ones on top of graphene. Okay, very nice. That, the, same the, same the same molecule. If yeah. You, if you go just one one more uh, thing, if you go to to my name, there is another work from the group of Ellen that was performed also by Rodi Rodrigo when he was uh, in Ellen doing the the sandwich. Uh, they could see really long, very very long lines, and then you have separate molecules with uh, uh, like a square uh, network. And then another long wire. It, it's amazing that this long wire goes through the step edge. And then in that case, we believe the, the interaction, the, the molecule to molecule interaction is more important, is what is dominating this, uh, this structure. It, and is interesting, more or less periodic. You have one line, and then we have a lot of molecules, I don't know, 10 lines or more. And then another line. 
Okay. Let's go through the, the, the edges. Well, then I think, I think we, can, we can discuss this uh, uh, later in more detail. Yeah? But just one uh, patterns commensurate with the lattice, the underlying lattice, the silver, or the, or the graphene? Yeah, in the, in the case of the, the, uh, the silver, yes, it's, it's commensurate. It's a commensurate, right? It's okay. commensurate. Then, then the, it, it means it's really periodic with yes. the, yes, the yes, whole yes. underlying lattice. And that, yes. is, uh, that is very nice, yeah. Yes, yes. So we, we should discuss this some another time. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, you very much. Very welcome. Um, any more? Any more questions? Anyone? Um, Hi, Abine. Uh, Edson, thank you. go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, I am a uh, theoretician, so I may ask a very uh, naive question. But <laughs> SPM, how, how this uh, uh, device and equipment are very attractive? From my point of view. And my question is essentially uh, is con, con, maybe connected some to this question of, also. And how difficult it is to move certain molecule on top of on, on the surface or, uh, in, or throughout the surface. So if they if the molecule are strongly attached to the, to the surface, how how is it how important is this? Uh, uh, is the connection, the, the chemical bond, right? On the very, surface. very and good. If, so, in, and presumably, from uh, maybe it's naive, if, if the strongest molecule on, on the surface need to approach the tip closer, or perhaps, uh, or perhaps uh, increase the current. Or the, 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 the bio voltage. So, but it, but perhaps you can break the molecule apart. So, if, can can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Uh, let let me uh, go in uh, in different ways. Uh, 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 here is not really working, but if you go to the to the paper and uh, uh, and see uh, what we did. Uh, we we did some movies, uh, some kind of movies of the the molecule. Uh, and, and we see these molecules here, particularly in this case, they are not really freeze on the surface. They are. Uh, we can apparently we can see individual molecules like this, but they are movable. In fact, if you uh, they are they are uh, uh, moving not so fast in such a way that our measuring is, is much faster than the movement of the molecule. Then we can see the molecule. But if you, if you do several images, we can see the molecules goes to different directions and they, they, they turn, they, they jump, yeah? And with that, we, we could, in this particular work, we could measure the position of the molecules like a um, uh, um, uh, Brownian movement. Huh? We could measure the, 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 the position of the molecules, do a statistics, yeah, plot a, a, a Henius, uh plot, and extract the, the, the energy the barrier, the energy of barrier for trans translection, and was around one AV. That means with one AV barrier, the molecule cannot really travel free on the surface because you have this interaction of the nitrogen to the surface. This is the reason. This, this is the uh, reason why the molecule is not uh, like a free gas on the surface. If you put the same molecule on top, not the really the same uh, molecule, a little bit different molecule on top of graphene, the interaction is so small that if you put very few molecules, you cannot see the molecule. The molecule is traveling very, very fast. It's disturbing the tip. When you try to measure, one molecule comes in, yeah? 
and disturb your, your measurement. That means this we can extract this information that the molecule is not so uh, is not so mobile on the surface, but they can be mobile. Yeah, also. And in this case, for example, if you try to measure, the only chance you needed to freeze. You needed to freeze. For example, for other molecules, we have these nitrogen, they bound it to the surface, they freeze the, the ribbon. And because of that, we can measure without disturbing with the tip. Because typically you do STM in low temperature. Our equipment, we are doing STM in room temperature. And we can do in room temperature for some systems where we have this strong interaction. Otherwise, we have no chance to see the individuals. When you construct the, 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 the self-assembly, like in this image here, that is the case of the molecule on top of silver. And then we have all the molecules interaction one together and they, they are more or less stopped. But if you uh, 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 discharge the tip, yeah, if you approach the tip and we change the bias uh, from, I don't know, uh, here we measure in minus 1.3 AV, uh, three volts. Yeah? If you go like, for example, 4 AV, we can change the molecule. In principle, it's possible to change the molecule. If you allow, maybe, uh, if you allow, uh, I have a nice uh, uh, thing here. Maybe I can show. Let me see if I can, can show you. Uh, you. Uh, yeah, here. I don't know. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. You, you can see here that we, we have this uh, pattern yeah. of the molecules. We, we have evaporated uh, zinc on top. And we can come with the tip locally and discharge. And what we do, we transform the molecule. Can you see, maybe it's too fast, but you, we, we have this kind and then we transform the molecule. And the, the transforming molecule also interacts different. You, have, you go from a rectangular pattern in some, kind, in some, some case to a hexagonal pattern. This is one way you can uh, change. In fact, what, what we have discovered that probably when we do this discharging, what we are promoting is the methylation of the molecule with the zinc atom. Yeah, because we, we measure uh, methylate uh, species uh, produced in the, in the chemistry. Yeah? They come with the already methylate and they show the same, same shape, the same structure and so on. That means when we are discharging locally the, the tip, we are giving energy and we are promoting the methylation. That means hydrogen goes away and the, the zinc atom goes inside. Hmm. No, no, it's quite surprising that even at the room temperature we can have high resolution. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say in some cases we can do that. Some other cases we cannot, uh, we cannot really, really see. In some cases, we can even resolve small clusters of atoms. I don't know if I have here, but in some cases, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, let's see, highlights maybe here. Uh, we can really see very small clusters of atoms. Uh, no, 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 highlights. Not highlights. Minus. Uh, maybe here. Uh, what I'm looking for is, yeah, this one. These one uh, are those irons huh, that we, we evaporate on the surface. Then we can know that we construct these structures. The irons goes in these places. We can identify if they are iron or if they are copper because of the contrast, dense of states. 
And here we are pretty sure we have um, uh, a cluster of iron atoms. Mm. You see? And then we, we can really see uh, atom, uh, atomic resolution in, in this system. But after they form these clusters, uh, after uh -huh. they form this cluster, we can, they stop and we can uh -huh. really see at room temperature. Well, oh, very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have two, two questions if uh, that there are no more questions. Uh, well, my, my first question you answered already because during your talk, I was, uh, I was thinking, well, is it possible to make uh, magnetic structures with uh, with this uh, Lego thing that you are showing? Uh, you showed that uh, yes, and that you are doing already, and that you are having some very interesting results. My, uh, as you answered already, my first question. My second question would be: uh, Did you try to to play? Uh, I saw that. Uh, most of the magnetic ions that you, you played around were uh, transition metal ions from the 3D uh, uh, line, uh, the 3D row in the periodic table. Did you try to play with lanthanides, with uh, ray versus? No, but uh, I should because- Is it uh, possible? In principle, yes. Uh, there is a group in Munich, very famous group, uh, group in Munich uh, Johannes Bach group, uh, they did. They did okay. with the lanthanides, uh, porphyrins, they could uh, metallate the porphyrin with the lanthanide. I think was the first case uh, they published in Nature Chemistry very recently, and it's really nice. It's really uh -huh. nice what we can do. Uh, for example, this is the case in the, in the screen where this guy that my student is going to do the experiment, what, what kind of things they can do. The uh -huh. nice thing is because they really can go to the, to the synchrotron and measure uh, with the lanthanides, maybe it's not so easy, but with the 3D metals, you can easily measure XMCD and extract the information here with uh, circular dichroism if they are really magnetic. And then okay. we really know if they are magnetic. This is our dream. They are already doing. Uh -huh. uh, but here we could not uh, really do XMCD in the last uh, in the last few years because the series is being uh, constructed. But uh, Julio Pregincis, that is the leader uh, for the XMCD beam line, uh, said to me that in principle, mid of next year, we'll be ready. For, for some users to, to go and play. And then we want to do the experiment in Switzerland. They are already doing it. Yeah. We can see this nature uh, communication and we can try to think and apply the same thing here. Because it, it, it's really like uh, you need to, you have a large uh, uh, learning curve to, to how to prepare the sample and then how to measure. Nah? If you know how to measure in STM, is not the same thing how to do in the synchrotron. Ah, there you are using uh, high magnetic field, you are using very localized beam, high power. There's a lot of secrets to do. And because of that, I think it's very, very nice that Natalie is going there to learn about that and it comes with this knowledge to, to okay. us. Okay, great. Yeah, because you could you could maybe try to see to see some heavy fermion stuff with the, the lanthanides. Yeah, yeah, this that is that would really, be exciting. That would really, be really, really exciting. Yeah, I had seen people said uh, uh, saying about uh, uh, superconducting behavior of that. True. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, but if you prove something like that, uh, go to science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because sure. it, will, it will be a breakthrough, I would say. Yeah, uh -huh. it will be really interesting thing. But I know some people are trying to do. I, I didn't, I didn't try up to now. Okay, so uh, if there are no more questions, we should thank the speaker again for the very, very nice talk. Uh, I'm gonna be mailing you soon to ask for these slides. For yeah. so we post, we will post them together with the 
with the talk in our YouTube channel. Okay, I can send to you. Could be 